Spore toilets have always been problematic, but I would love to raise the conversation, covering the perspective of the pupil, the school and the teacher. And it will be so interesting to have some feedback from yourselves with balanced input on how we can work with the school to help improve bladder and bowel health. For example, yes, PSHE, but also reaching education to the teachers themselves and how we can work positively with the school. I had a conversation with three lads at senior school. The pupils within that school, there's 1,700 and there's two um, toilet blocks. You've got the block for the PE area and then you have another block which is unisex and it's an open area. The three lads all said independently that there are an awful lot of toilets that aren't in working order. Also, they said that the locks on the doors weren't didn't, they didn't feel was sufficient enough, so they felt if there was enough pressure against the door, it would open. In lessons, if they need to go to the toilet, they're not always allowed. Yes, they can gain a toilet pass. It's how discreet can that toilet pass be used? I have spoken to a teacher and this particular teacher said the child only has to come up to me very quietly and say they need the toilet and they can go. But there is an embarrassment about having a toilet pass. We want them, I'm glad that we have them. How can we make it so that pupils are feeling safe with regards to having this access to a toilet pass? Over the last two years where we've had restrictions, the school had to put in place um, a rule with regards to using the facilities. And that was, if you needed the toilet during class time, then you had to be escorted by a member of staff and that member of staff would be working within the reception area. And so the teacher would have to contact that member of staff to then put down their, their admin to then walk to the um, classroom to escort the child. The feedback I'm getting from the pupils is, well, actually sometimes the bell goes before the had the chance to be escorted and we have to go directly to the next lesson and so then the process begins again. It's very disruptive obviously for the lesson and to everybody involved. Some of the teachers are now more lenient on that and will let the child go to the toilet but other teachers are still using this particular practice of method of having an escort. All three lads these are some of their words. Hygiene with regards to the loos. Horrendous, shocking, the PE toilets in particular. Again, the feedback from the, the lads that I've spoken to, the PE toilets are closed for cleaning in period three and four. So then there's only the one block left available. In fact, actually, other toilets are also closed off within that block during lesson time. Is that to prevent abuse of the facilities? It could be. Um, toilets are also closed promptly at the end of school day, was something else that they mentioned. If you've got after school clubs, it's harder to find a toilet that's open when you finish that club. I'm going to give you the feedback from each of the pupils. So let's say pupil one. He reduces his fluids and he will hold on all day and it creates anxiety. This particular pupil has headaches as well. Pupil two. Everybody goes to the toilet at lunchtime. It's really, really busy and after lunch they're closed for cleaning. He reduces fluids because of this. In fact, he'll try not to have to have a drink. When I said, well, can you not queue up at lunchtime? I don't always feel like going to the toilet at lunchtime. I feel this particular pupil needs lessons in bladder management, drinking regularly during the day. And I think this is where my passion is to get some of this education to the teachers and um, to the students at the school. Pupil three, his words. I feel bad because I cannot go to the toilet when I need to. 
I restrict my fluids in case I experience urgency. I try not to drink too much. The distance of the toilets in relation to the class, well, my teacher will complain if I'm away from the lesson too long. Understandable, but again, it's practicalities here, isn't it? Um, again, pupil three says that he's had a couple of times where he has panicked to get home in time to pass his bowels. Now, I have spoken to teachers too, and actually for their own bladder and bowel health, I'm hearing that sometimes they restrict their fluids because they haven't got time to go to the toilet in between classes. This all breaks my heart. <laughs> I think that if we can bring, as I mentioned, some good fluid and bladder management, bowel health, it would make such a difference for the future, um, for health and help prevent anxiety. Hygiene, what can we say about hygiene? If the toilets are dirty, people will hover over the toilet, won't they? Girls will hover. We know that's not good bladder health with regards to um, going to the toilet. What can we do about all of this? Um, and this is where I need your help. There is so much I could say about this. Um, I'm, I'm looking at approaching school in my professional manner and I'm going to go in there really open to just say why I feel this is important. Could I have a look around the toilets? Is there anything I can do to help with education for bladder management, bowel management to the pupils, but also to the teachers? So just not for the teachers for themselves, but also so they understand. But then again, getting, getting the message across to the pupils that they need to actually respect their facilities because I suspect that is a large part of this um, problem as well. I think I've covered everything. Probably not. <laughs> um, we can talk about girls and sanitary change, etc., etc. It's a huge subject, isn't it? So yes, please give me your input if you've worked in this area and I'm going to see what I can do for our local schools. Thank you.